The money supply tells us how much physical currency, as well as assets so liquid that they're pretty close to acting as physical currency, exist in the economy of a country at a certain point in time. This data is usually reported by the country's central bank, and the way it's measured can differ from country to country. In the US, for example, the most popular data points are A, the monetary base, which tells us how much actual currency there is in circulation, plus how much banks and other depository institutions keep as reserve balances in their accounts at the Federal Reserve. B. M1 tells us how much currency is held by the public as well as how many transaction deposits exist. In other words, accounts and deposits that can be used for transactions immediately. C. M2 is basically M1 plus savings deposits, time deposits under $100,000, and retail money market fund shares. Each tells us something different. So let's assume you're wondering why prices haven't gone up a ton despite the Federal Reserve pumping money into the system through quantitative easing. Well, money supply data can help us. You see, there were roughly $850 billion in the monetary base in August of 2008, so before quantitative easing started. At the moment of writing, after multiple rounds of QE, that figure went up to approximately 3.8 trillion, so about 4.5 times more, down a bit from its peak of close to 4.1 trillion in August of 2014. By comparison, the M1 money stock, quote unquote only, went up roughly 2.6 times from approximately 1.4 trillion in August of 2008 to 3.7 trillion today, and in August of 2014, when the monetary base peaked, it was barely at 2.8 trillion. The M2 money stock went up only 1.8 times from 7.8 trillion in August of 2008 to 14 trillion today and in August of 2014 it was at just 11.5 trillion. As can be seen, the central bank can indeed increase the monetary base at will, but in our case it did not control what happened next. If it prints even 100 trillion but that money just stays parked with them rather than find its way into the real economy, prices obviously won't go up. If however it would give each US citizen an equal share of that 100 trillion amount, well, Good luck with that.